Welcome back to eLiterate TV. I'm Michael Feldstein, and I'm here with Martin Weller from the Open University in the United Kingdom. Welcome, Martin. Hi, Michael. Martin is uh, one of the grant recipients for the 2013 MOOC grants. Uh, so, Martin, why don't you tell us a little bit about your project? What are you What are you trying to learn? Okay, there's two elements to it, really. The first is looking at just data, so completion data. So um, that's been done by my research student, Katie Jordan. We're trying to think, what are the things that influence uh, completion data? What makes people get to the end of a MOOC? Uh, and that's not by interviewing them, it's just kind of looking at the data that's out there. So is it the length of course, does that have an effect? Is it the provider of the course? Is it the type of MOOC that it get? So we're plotting all that data, and we've got data from about 220 MOOCs, and we're kind of mapping to see if there's statistical variation between those things. So that's the first part. And the second part is looking at learning design, which is kind of my side of it, really. And what are you looking at in regards to learning design? Well, learning design is um, we're trying to use some tools that we developed at the Open University, and we're looking at two things. One is the uh, use of resources, and the other is uh, what students are actually doing within a, a particular course. And what I'm trying to see is whether you get certain patterns that emerge. So perhaps some MOOCs are kind of more content-driven and others are more kind of experiential or conversationally driven. And are those patterns specific to MOOCs or do you expect to see relevance in other course design types? I think you might see some patterns that become particularly relevant for the kind of X MOOCs which are kind of very content driven. So you see lots of use of video for example and there's not much use of uh, conversation or guidance but that's because it's really about getting people to understand content very quickly. But other MOOCs are, are much more about developing skills and things. So I think you, you see some crossover with normal courses and some quite MOOC particular patterns emerging. And how do you think your research might change the way the Open University does MOOCs in the future? I want just the OU, I think just four people might be, I'm not trying to say that there's, a, there's one good design, it's more like there are certain designs that are good for achieving certain outcomes. So it might say, uh, if you want to, a, a MOOC that delivers certain things like understanding content, that this is the type of pattern you want to have for learning design. Mm. Uh, or it might want, from the data you might say it needs to be this so many weeks long if you want a kind of good completion rate if that matters to you. But if you want to say it, for a MOOC you're trying to develop certain skills, this might be the pattern you're looking for. Mm. So I think it just, it's also for learners as well, what type of MOOC am I going into, which type is it? Because they're not all the same, I think we tend to think of them as kind of MOOCs is one big thing, but they're not, there's, there's lots of different types of things in there. And I think being more explicit about what the kind of contract you're entering into would be important for learners and for, and for designers. Mm. And more generally, thinking about not only your project, but the other projects that you're hearing about, what do you hope that we're going to know about MOOCs a year from now that we don't know today? I'd like to have more kind of evidence about them. I think I'm big on evidence-based stuff, so you know, what are learners getting from them? What are the, what are the motivations that learners going some with? And also, why are institutions developing them? I think at the moment, the answer is we're, we're doing MOOCs because we feel like we have to do MOOCs. We don't know why. I think it's a much more nuanced picture than that. We've been saying, so if you want to do MOOCs for particular purposes, then this is what you need to do, and this might be the return you get on it. And for learners, you know, what do they want to get out of it, and what's their experience? I think just trying to build up a richer picture of what it is that, that goes on in the MOOC world and, and where they're useful and also where they're, they don't really apply. At the moment, we're kind of applying them to everything and they kind of, this idea of the, the, the big revolution in higher education. I think, you know, they're not a, a panacea for all problems, and, but they might be really good in particular areas. I think, so finding out kind of a better detailed picture of, where, of what occurs in the MOOCosphere, you know, you know, will be a, a good outcome from now. So we'll hopefully talk again in a year and find out uh, what we've learned. Martin Weller, thank you for your time. Thank you.